Hello again and welcome to my study. Welcome to my cluttered up computer screen here. This is where we talk about all things writing and we're trying to make your writing better, make everyone's writing better. And in this particular lecture, we're picking up a discussion that we started in part one of a lecture on run-on sentences. So this is part two. In part one, we talked about recognizing a run-on sentence. How do we know a run-on sentence when we see it? And uh, we need to know that or we can't fix it. And in many cases, I see evidence in student writing that many students do not know what a run-on sentence is when they encounter it, when they write it. They just believe that it's a correct sentence. And there are very small things that make the difference. And we talked about what they are in part one. In part two here, we're going to talk about how to fix them when we see or when we write a, a run-on sentence. What do we do to make it not a run-on sentence, a correct sentence. So, it says here on our document, which we again uh, extracted mm -hmm. from uh, Rules for Writers by Diane Hacker and Nancy Summers, a very good reference book on good writing, on style and grammar and usage and punctuation and so forth. We're using this little uh, sheet to show how you might go about fixing a run-on sentence that you encounter. So you have four choices in fixing a run-on sentence. Okay, four choices, here they are. We'll start with number one. When you have a run-on sentence, as you may remember, we have two independent clauses. Independent clauses are a group of words that can stand alone as a sentence. When we take two clauses, two groups of words that can each stand together, stand alone as a sentence, uh, and join them, there are certain ways to do it. If we do it wrong, then it becomes a run-on sentence. Okay, so the first way to fix a run-on sentence is to use a comma and a coordinating conjunction. In the first part of this lecture, we talked about the coordinating conjunctions in the English language. There are seven of them, and here they are, and, but, or, nor, for, so, and yet. Those are the only coordinating conjunctions in the English language, and they are the only things we can use, only words we can use, along with a comma, to fix a fused sentence like the one that we have here in bold. Air pollution poses risk to all humans. Oops, i got to take this out because I've already fixed it. So let me bear with me. We'll make it a bad sentence again. Okay, air pollution poses risk to all humans. It can be deadly for asthma sufferers. So you can see I took out the uh, correcting mechanism here to make it a wrong sentence again or a run-on sentence. We have no indication. Now, what if we just put a comma in there? Air pollution poses risk to all humans. It can be deadly for asthma sufferers. Doesn't look too bad, and I get that a lot. No, it's still a run-on sentence, and if you recall the first part of the lecture, it's called a comma splice. If somebody tells you you have a comma splice, you rest assured that you have committed a run-on sentence and you need to fix it. What do you do? You can use a comma, and that's a good start, but you can't complete it correctly without a run, without a coordinating conjunction. In this case, we're using but. So now we have a complete sentence. Two independent clauses joined by a comma and a coordinating conjunction. And you can see it's a bit of a different sentence from what we would start out with, even if we just used the comma. It adds an, an element of information that we didn't have before. Air pollution poses risk to all humans, but it can be deadly for asthma sufferers. So the emphasis on our thinking here is that, yeah, it's risky for all of us to have polluted air, but for asthma sufferers, it could kill them. That's a, quite, a, uh, quite a contrast. So it sets up your discussion in a little bit different way than as if you just were to state it with a comma, which you can't do anyway because it's still a run-on sentence. Now, the second way we can fix a run-on sentence is to use a semicolon. Now, we could use a colon or a dash in some cases, but a semicolon is kind of the standard go-to thing for fixing a run-on sentence, uh, like the one we had above. And so here it is. A little note before we start. A semicolon may be used alone, or you can use it with, the tr with a transitional expression. Now, a transitional expression is a not- it is not a coordinating conjunction, and many people use a transitional expression after a comma to join together two clauses and think that it's a sentence. But uh, a word like, for example, however, a transitional expression is not a choice that fixes a 
run on sentence. So let's try how to let's let's try this theory out here, this semicolon solution. Air pollution poses risk to all humans, and here's where we're going to put our semicolon. It can be deadly for asthma sufferers. So we've now made the pause and designated to the reader that we're moving to a second thought that is a thought in and of itself, a complete thought like a sentence is. Uh, but we've separated them, and that's a legitimate and correct way to correct a run-on sentence. It's now a legitimate sentence. It's a little different from the meaning above. We don't have the but. We haven't made the contrast to the uh, threat for all humans and asthma sufferers quite as strong, but we've stated it, and we just put it out there for people to consider with a semicolon, and that's it. Now, what about the transitional expression? Okay, they said that we can use a semicolon with a transitional expression, and here we go using a transitional expression, which is however in this case. Air pollution poses risk to all humans, semicolon, however, it can be deadly for asthma sufferers. We've said something a little bit different than just using the semicolon again, and we've done it correctly because we can't use the transitional expression with just a comma. We need something stronger and that, in this case, is our semicolon. Okay, so number three, make the clauses into separate sentences. This is perhaps the easiest way to fix a run-on sentence. A run-on sentence is essentially two sentences fused together in this case. Two clauses, clauses or sentences in, the sen in a sense, they are related, but in this case we can just simply elect to put a period in there put an uppercase I here, and we have two perfectly good sentences that are expressive, communicate what you're trying to say, and do it in a little bit different way than just using a semicolon or a comma and a coordinating conjunction. So that's one option you can make. Air pollution poses risk to all humans. It can be deadly for asthma sufferers. So it just creates a little bit different emphasis on your thinking there for the reader. All right, number four is to really just start over again. Restructure the sentence. It's not really starting over again, but it is basically saying, okay, we've got a few sentences here. Uh, I can do the semicolon. That's eh, not quite right. I can do the comma and the coordinating conjunction. I don't know. And I, I really like it in one sentence, uh, but yeah, maybe I can fix it so I can say that without violating the, uh, the rule for run-on sentences. So in this case, what we're going to do is just make one of the independent clauses into a subordinate clause. In other words, a subordinate clause can't stand alone as a sentence. And we can simply do that by going although air pollution poses risks to all humans. Now we need a comma in here because we need to separate our clauses for the reader here. It can be deadly for asthma sufferers. So we've expressed our thought. We have uh, stopped the problem, prevented the, the solved the problem of having two independent clauses joined together with the wrong device or absence of devices, because we don't have two independent clauses anymore. We have a subordinate clause in the first case and an independent clause in the second case. So those are the four ways to revise your run-on sentences. Make sure you recognize them when you see them. They're kind of an egregious violation when you include, include a run-on sentence in your work. You are showing that you are not fully aware of everything you need to be aware of to write clearly to an audience.